So I, I waited till after the lecture. I went up to him. I said, listen, can I ask you a few questions? So he says, sure, my son, ask me. So I said, in the Bible, Jesus is on the cross. He says, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? These are my two questions. Jesus, you said he's God. He said, yes. I said, you said he's the son of God. He said, yes. I said, who is he calling upon? He says, my God, my God. So what I'm seeing here, I got your God, Jesus, and I got the God of Jesus because Jesus is calling on a God. You told me Jesus knew his purpose. He came to die for our sins because the purpose was to come die for us. He shouldn't be forsaken. And who forsaked him? If he's God, did he forsake himself? He put his hand on my shoulder. He says, son, you just... was very super super close-knit so I grew up with all my cousins and family always hanging out there was always my house was actually like the chill spot mm -hmm. so whenever Christmas came around everybody was in my house New Year's came around everybody was in my house I mean I come from a Christian family mm -hmm. uh, Pentecostal my parents weren't so religious you know getting the good things of life the material mm -hmm. world having the house having the car you know my father used to work two three jobs so that we could have those things and his mentality was I'm gonna give my kids what my parents were never able to give me but then with that came my grandmother who was like the religious figure of the household so I spent a lot of time with her while my parents went out to the club So this was kind of the process growing up. It was both religious and free flowing. <laughs> so we had both sides. So naturally coming up as a young man, I say we believed in what we were taught to believe in. It wasn't anything of, I have this belief system because I go to church and I really listen to the pastor and I'm paying attention and I, and I want to be a believer, right? My grandmother was very keen on saying like, don't be unrighteous. Don't be like your parents. She used to say, you know, all of that drinking and that party and you know, I mean, that's the devil's work. Don't be involved in that stuff. So she tried to bring me up uh, that way. My father, he really doesn't go to church. He believes that there's a God. He kind of says, I believe there's God. I'm going to be a good person. I'm going to live right. I'm going to leave it there. And then my mother, she wasn't religious either. She became religious later on in life. But then because there was that aspect of partying and drinking all the time. So we grew up naturally wanting to do those things as well. So we could drink and then we begin to taste alcohol so I, I i say i wasn't really faithful because i had those two lives in my face this one seemed pleasurable and enjoyable right everybody's here having fun over here it's kind of like okay you go to church we sing everybody seems to get emotional and spiritual about it oh good but okay what's the big deal so i don't i didn't see myself as very spiritual or religious at that point in life So I got into a lot of trouble, man. From seventh grade to about my junior year in high school, I got into so much trouble based off of just because of alcohol, drugs, weed, selling it. By that point, I almost died like twice. I was drinking and driving. I crashed my car two times, almost killed myself. Um, the second time I was in, in a diner and some dudes said something to my cousins and my cousin got up and he began to fight with them. I got up, I started to fight, got hit with a ketchup bottle. I got hit this side, coffee cup on this side. I had a charge, threat with attempted murder when I was 18, 19. And then I got hit with the biggie. I got a girl pregnant. Now I'm 18 with a kid on the way. Eight, nine months later, I got another girl pregnant. Now I got two different women, two kids on the way. I ain't got no education. I'm a dropout. I'm working odd jobs and I'm selling drugs to try to make up ends meet on top of that. because I was studying political science. After like a month, two months, a brother came out of prison, Abdul Aziz, and he had accepted Islam in prison. He gave a talk that day on Islam, homosexuality, and Tawheed. He gave me my first book, Kitab al Tawheed by Dr. Bilal Phillips, and then our first Quran.
So in the process of that, especially going through the New Testament, I came to the point where I'm finding Jesus never said he was God. They called him the prophet. He didn't deny it. He's prostrating on the ground, praying to God. He's saying, don't call me good. The only one good is that one in heaven. You know what I mean? He's saying, don't call no one father on earth. The only one that only father is that one in heaven. Basically, the father is better than I. He's greater than I. Come on the day of judgment. You're going to say, my Lord, my Lord. He's going to say, get away from me, you wicked people, for you have not done what that father has commanded you. And then I got to the point where he was on the cross. And on the cross, I read the verse, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That joint jammed me. So I went to a debate. It was a Christian Muslim debate. And the pastor was like, you know, Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is God. So I, I waited to after the lecture. I went up to him. I said, listen, can I ask you a few questions? I said, I'm battling faith right now. I'm like stuck. And if you could solve this problem for me, it would help me in this journey. So he says, sure, my son, ask me. So I said, in the Bible, Jesus is on the cross. He says, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? These are my two questions. Jesus, you said he's God. He said, yes. I said, you said he's the son of God. He said, yes. I said, who is he calling upon? He says, my God, my God. So what I'm seeing here, I got your God, Jesus, and I got the God of Jesus because Jesus is calling on the God. And then he said, why has thou forsaken me? You told me Jesus knew his purpose. He came to die for our sins. So why is he saying now in the critical moment, now you're going to say, why has thou forsaken me? If he didn't, if he's saying that he didn't know his purpose because the purpose was to come die for us. And who forsaked him? If he's God, did he forsake himself? Did he forget his own mission? Did he forget his own cause? I said, so how do I understand all of that? He put his hand on my shoulder. He says, son, you just have to have faith. I looked at him, I was like, shh. I said, that was the worst thing to tell me. So after that, we went back to Abdul Aziz. I told him, I said, I'm ready. I said, I believe in Allah, Muhammad, I don't know him too well, but obviously if he came with this book, this book is amazing. Abdul Aziz was like, yo, not a problem. So we took Shahada based on that, Alhamdulillah. 